Hello and welcome to today's session. Today I want to talk about understanding data and how to compute correlations, the relationship between two or more variables. And when it comes to managing data, we can start with what is data, how it relates to information, how it relates to knowledge, how it relates to wisdom and correlation between various sets of variables. So data may come from a variety of sources, such as company reports, company documents, interviews, on-site direct measurements, and statistical sampling that you might be involved with. So if you have good data, you'll hopefully have good outcome. On the other hand, if the data is not very good, the output may not be very good or will not be very good either. In today's environment, we are basically accumulating data very, very, very rapidly. Think about your own digital shadow, right? We're leaving our digital footprints everywhere. Think about how, on, how often you're online every single day, how often you use your credit card or um, digital video surveillances that are taking place or how often you send email, how often you read email and receive emails all the blogs that we uh, look into or even post, uh, people that we reply to on YouTube or searches that we make on Google. Every time you're connected to the internet, you're leaving your digital footprints, right? So data is being accumulated about all of us as groups of individuals, as consumers, as employees. And in our organizations, we should make good use of this data. So before we can learn how to manage data, think about some of the difficulties that are associated with data management. So the amount of data is increasing exponentially. We know that data can be scattered and collected by many individuals using various methods and devices. Data comes from many, many sources, some credible, some not so credible. In data security, quality, integrity are critically important nowadays. So we have an ever increasing amount of data which needs to be considered in making organizational decisions on a regular basis. Sometimes we need to make judgments in real time, right? Assuming that we've had access to data or exposure to data patterns and trends, we can make better judgments. But if we have not had that analysis or that pattern of data, then we may not be able to make the right decisions. So sometimes in order to um, convert any data into useful data, we need to be concerned about normalization of it. So normalization is a method for analyzing and reducing a relational database to its most streamlined form for minimum redundancy, maximum data integrity, and for best processing performance and best outcomes. Let us look a little bit more closely about data information and knowledge. So data describes the raw, unsummarized, and unanalyzed facts. Information would be data that are organized or normalized in a meaningful fashion. Knowledge, on the other hand, would represent data as well as information that is organized to convey understanding in learning. Let's look at an example of this in an academic environment. So for example, data would be student GPA in a university or academic environment. Now, when that GPA is linked to a person's name, it becomes information to the faculty, to the administration, and to the student groups. On the other hand, if students with GPA is greater than 3.5 are more successful in a graduate program, master's doctoral program, then most schools will target those students because they'll be more successful in those programs as opposed to getting in and then dropping out. So knowing that students with 3.5 GPA are more successful in graduate program is knowledge. So our goal is to convert data that is useful into information and then that information hopefully into knowledge so our managers, our professionals in the workplace can use them with regards to people development and talent acquisition and retention in the workplace. So what is knowledge management, which is obviously very closely related to talent uh, development and talent management? 
knowledge management is a process that helps organizations manipulate important knowledge that is part of the organization's memory, usually in an unstructured format. So knowledge management is very important for effective talent management and talent retention. If people don't have that requisite knowledge necessary to do their jobs and make predictions about the future and strategize, they're not going to be able to be very successful in achieving the organization's outcomes or goals. So knowledge can be explicit or tacit. Explicit knowledge is basically what is above the water line. And in this analogy, you can see the iceberg, you can see the material at the front of you, you can read it, you can acquire it by observing from others. On the other hand, the tacit knowledge is the most difficult to acquire, to collect, to transition, to pass on to others. So tac tacit knowledge is basically what is hidden. Uh, it is below the waterline in the iceberg. You cannot see it. And we don't want what is explicit knowledge or tacit knowledge to leave the organization without it being transferred to other talented individuals in the organization so we can make good use of it. Of course, the goal is to convert this data into information, information to knowledge and knowledge to wisdom for your human capital in the organization so they can make good decisions for achieving the organization's overall strategy. So our goal is to convert the data, information, and knowledge into wisdom by knowing each variable's relationship with others. This is why we study correlations. And today we are in the era of big data meeting predictive analytics. Think about a thousand possible candidates uh, that want to work for your company. What kind of predictions can we make about uh, this group of thousand candidates? Well, we can maybe visually look at them in terms of histograms in order to make some predictions. Okay, this histogram basically shows us that um, most of them fall in the average, right? So this is the bell curve. The majority of people will be somewhere in the middle, and then there are going to be people with certain skills, abilities, and differences on either side of the middle. Correlation is a measure of the degree to which two variables are linearly related. Correlations can range between minus one to plus one, with negative one representing a perfect negative relationship, zero representing no relationship whatsoever, and one representing a perfect positive relationship. So let's look at some of these visually. So as you can see in this visual, we have different types of bivariate relationships. Negative, weak, linear, positive, strong, and non-linear. So this is a visual representation of the relationship between two variables. In this visual, you have a perfect positive relationship where the score is plus one. Now we have a positive correlation where the correlation score is greater than zero and smaller than one. Now we have no correlation whatsoever between these two variables on the y and x axis. And finally, we have perfect negative correlation where the correlation score is a minus one. So when can you use correlations? So think about the medical industry where correlations of common medical procedures and outcomes have been documented over time. For example, there's the correlation between coronary bypass surgery and survival in the next five to 10 years. We have the relation, we can say the relationship between smoking and lung cancer within let's say 20, 25 year period. You can even study the effects of Viagra on headaches and flushing for men. Or you can study the effects of Viagra on improved sexual functioning. So again, if you're keeping track of numbers and data, you can see the results and patterns, and you can make certain predictions about the outcomes. If we've had 
good improvements over the past and high level of satisfaction based on a procedure or based on medication. Hopefully the same thing will be true of more patients in the future, given that the circumstances are similar, right? So that's the whole idea behind talent management. If we keep track of data for the past year, for the past five years, we can make some predictions about the next year and the next five years, as long as the variables are staying stable over time. We're gonna do a tutorial. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to compute a correlation between two continuous variables using Microsoft Excel. For the purpose of this exercise, now imagine that the engagement in job satisfaction data for each of the employees were collected using an annual employee survey. In each worker's unique ID was used to merge the survey data with their average annual customer satisfaction rating with their supervisor's rated performance evaluation score and the amount of annual sales revenue that they actually generated for their organization. So for the purpose of this tutorial, for the time being, we will ignore statistical significance and simply practice interpreting the sign, what is positive or negative, as well as magnitude or size of each correlation. So let's go ahead and get to this tutorial on Microsoft Excel. Okay, so we have opened the data here on Excel spreadsheet and you notice here employee ID is in the A column. We have engagement, we have job satisfaction, customer satisfaction, performance uh, score uh, from the supervisor here, how well an employee was rated and overall sales revenue um, that is documented in each of these columns. And the employee ID, obviously, and then the numbers uh, are associated with it. So we don't know the names, but this is coding, right? So we're coding the process. Let's look at the correlation between job satisfaction, which would be column C, and performance rating by the manager, which would be column E. We're gonna look at uh, job satisfaction versus performance score, right? So in this case, we would mark that. So we would say, job satisfaction satisfaction versus performance rating so in this case we would type that this way we know exactly what we're measuring so then we come to the next cell we would simply type equal then C O R R E L, which stands for basically correlation, and then parentheses. So uh, the first uh, variable is job satisfaction, which would be from row C2 and then colon all the way to C60, which should now highlight that row for us. See? So the first row C starting with row two all the way to 60 is highlighted. Now you simply put a comma before you move on to the second variable, which is performance evaluation score. So in this case, that would be E2 colon E60. And you see the second um, variable is highlighted here. Now all we have to do is close the parenthesis and hit enter, which should give us the correlation number. Okay, so you can see here we got 0 0.01495738, right? So that is our correlation number between these two variables. So at any time you wanna see which, which uh, variables you computed, you write it here, right? So job satisfaction versus performance evaluation rating. So that's why we write um, the words just so we don't forget because you might uh, actually analyze some of the other areas as well. So it's as simple as that to see what the correlation number is for us. Okay, so you got this number, right? So what does this number really mean? Well, remember that correlation coefficient can range from negative one to plus one 
uh, where negative one indicates a perfect negative or inverse linear association, and positive one indicates a perfect positive linear association. And a score of 0.00, .00 indicates no association whatsoever. So the correlation coefficient in this case is approximately 0 0.015. Five, so we're rounding it off uh, to the nearest number. Regarding the sign, the correlation coefficient is positive, so which indicates a positive linear association. And with that being said, next we look at the magnitude uh, of the correlation coefficient, which is virtually zero. So for our purpose, we describe the magnitude of the correlation coefficient, you know, in this case, basically negligible which is smaller than 0.1. In this case, a correlation coefficient score of 0 0.015 is considered to be negligible. It's not small, it's not medium, it's not large, it's negligible. Okay, so now that you have learned how to compute the correlation using Corel or C-O-R-R-E-L function in Excel, you can practice running additional correlations using the same data or new data that you collect. So good luck computing correlations and making sense of what they actually mean in the workplace. In summary, let me mention that, you know, as always try to be a rational and objective professional by analyzing the numbers, analyzing the data, analyzing the facts in every situation so you can make evidence-based decisions. You can do it. Good luck.